everyone and welcome to stamp and chat live i am gina from gina k designs and it's great to see all of you coming in from around the u.s and around the world it is our crafternoon live and we are so excited to have everybody here today we're going to be working with foil and i want to tell you right up front the this technique that i'm doing today is different than the way i've been doing foil in the past so in the past, I've been showing you how to use deco foil transfer gel. Um, I've been showing you how to use toner sheets and how to use pre-designed toner sheets. Today, we're not going to do any of that. We are going to use stamps and we're going to use stencils. And I'm going to show you a completely different method of getting foil to adhere to your card and to those designs. Now, this is not the glimmer machine. So for those of you that have invested in that machine and that's a pricey investment and those foils are dedicated to that system, that will not work with what I'm doing today. What I'm doing today is working with just the simple deco foil that comes in the tubes or comes in the flat Gina K Designs packs. So it is uh, laminator style foil, and that's what we're going to be using today. And I know a lot of you have it because you've been with me for a while and I've been doing this kind of foil for a long time. So we're going to stick with that kind of foil today. And we are going to use a laminator. Now, I do want to tell you a little bit about laminators. You do not have to have an expensive laminator. I know there's people out there saying, I just can't afford to get into foil. I'm telling you, there are laminators on Amazon for under 20 bucks that will work just fine. Um, the one laminator that I have is this one. It's called the Royal Sovereign. It's not very big at all. You can see it fits in a drawer. It can fit, you know, on a shelf underneath your table. The other laminator that I like to use is a more expensive laminator. It's this one. It's the, the Mink. And this one was designed for the crafting industry. So it's just a little bit different as far as why it works the way it works. And I'll explain that to you when we get started today. But go dig in your attic or in your basement. I bet half of you have a laminator stuffed up there from an old office thing that you did or a project that you did when your kids were young in school. As long as it heats up and it's a laminator, it should work. So that is, I just want to clarify all of that before we get started, just in case, because I know there's like more than one way to do foil now. This is an easy way. Now, the other thing about this technique today, we're not looking for those crisp, sharp images today. We are looking for something that's a little bit more distressed. Um, I think you're gonna love the, the, the way that this looks. And we're gonna be using the poinsettia stamp set, the layering poinsettia stamp set. And we're also going to be using the blizzard stamp set that was in the holiday cheer kit. So you can do this with any snowflake stamp set. I really like this one because it's very delicate and I think it kind of adds to the charm of the foil. But with that being said, before we go any further, we do have to say hello to Tom. Hey, Tom. Happy Crafternoon. How are you today? Go dig in your basement. <laughs> that's the, uh, that's the, so is, uh, let me see, is distressed, does that mean a little bit closer to uh, horrible? No, no, it so doesn't. So it still has to be better than horrible. It will be. It, it'll be. But it's closer to horrible than. No, no. Distressed is a style. Ah. It's more, a little bit more grungy. It's a little bit more spotty, but it's a really cool look. Okay. So. <laughs> I, I'm, better than horrible is kind of a style too. It's, it's, uh, it's getting there anyway. Anyway. <laughs> welcome. I'll be here in the dead space. <laughs> filling up the dead space and uh, <laughs> anything you need, let me know. 
<laughs> will you be back with the word of the day, right? I will be back with the word of the day. Okay, good. All right. Okay, so let's get started right away. But I'm going to ask you guys, I've got a couple colors here. I've got the orchids and I've got turquoise. So which would you like to see as far as a um, poinsettia goes? Should we go with more of a turquoisey thing or should we do these vibrant orchids. I haven't used the orchids yet on the stencil and I think it would be beautiful. If you watched my five minute card video last week, I did it with the spruces and it was amazing. It came out so beautiful. I did not expect it to look that good. Um, so what do you think, Tom? Can we look at the new comments so I can see what's coming in? Orchid. All right. Okay, I see more orchid than turquoise. I do believe that the turquoise would be beautiful and maybe I'll do a turquoise one coming up in another video, but today we'll focus on the orchids. Okay, so I have our light orchids and I have our, our light orchid and our medium orchid. And I think these two colors together are going to be the perfect blend for this stencil. Now I am going to use a full six by six sheet of paper for this. And the reason I'm going to do this is because I'm going to do something in the last step and I don't want to have to worry about my ink not being completely dry. And I'll explain that to you in just a little bit. So we're going to start with the biggest stencil here. Let me put my glasses on. We're going to start with the largest stencil here. And to make these line up, you just want to make sure that the writing here at the bottom of the stencil, it says Gina K Designs, and then it says Perfect Point Set of One. You just want to make sure that that is um, forward facing and down at the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to put a little washi tape down. Actually, you know what I'm going to use instead? I'm going to use some masking magic strips because I don't want to tear anything. So I'm going to use masking magic strips for this. But you can use washi tape or you can use purple tape. You can use pixie tape, whatever you have to just hold your cardstock down. All right. And I'm not worried about, I'm shedding, my hair's falling out. I'm not worried about, um, going all the way to the edge here because I am going to trim this down for my card. So I'm just going to use washi tape to hold this down and it will not damage my card stock at all. And then not washi tape, masking magic strips. And then I'm just going to place this stencil on top and I'm going to just tape that down so it doesn't go anywhere. Okay. So the first color we're going to use is light orchid. I love the orchids. The orchids were really a passion color for me. We didn't have anything like the orchids in our collection. The only thing that we had that was close was passionate pink and it's just too hot pink. These orchids are just deep and, and just so brilliant. So I'm gonna clean my pink brush off a little bit here before I get started because I don't know what's on here. All right. So I'm starting with the light orchid. And I'm going to ink up my brush real well. And then I'm going to work my way around the perimeter of this design. So my color is heavier along the edges and it's going to get lighter as I go into the center. Okay. Yeah. And this stencil is now available as a standalone stencil. So if you guys were, you know, waiting for this one to be available by itself, it's available. Isn't that color gorgeous? It's just, it's not like any color we've ever had before. It's got that, it's that real light pink, but it's got that purple hue to it. It has a hue, Tom. It's got a hue. <laughs> it's got a hue. Oh my gosh. Okay. So now I've got that mostly along the outside. Now I'm going to work my way into the center here because I definitely want to get more color in here, but I just don't want it to be as dark as around the perimeter. I'm going to darken up the perimeter again a little bit more. I like how it just makes a crisp line around the outside like that. Oh, that's so pretty. I agree. I mean, you know, poinsettias, they come in all different colors now because I think that they have figured out ways to change the colors of flowers. I don't know if they put 
um, colored water into flowers now and they can suck it up and turn flowers blue and all different colors. It's kind of cool, weird, but cool. Okay. But this is crafting. So we have um, creative liberty to do whatever we want. All right. So that's my first color, the light orchid. Now I'm going to go to my second color. Look at that. Isn't that wow. crisp? This segment brought to you by Hugh Tube. Hugh Tube? <laughs> Do you have a ba dump bump? Because <laughs> you really need one. <laughs> it's bad enough. <laughs> All right. So this one, I'm going to, again, make sure that my words are in the same position. And I'm going to lay that on top there. I'm just going to find the spot where it all looks like it's on the inside of that poinsettia. And that looks pretty good to me. Okay. And now we're going to go with our second color, which is the medium orchid. Now, if I was not doing foiling with this, I would use the dark orchid for the veins. But I'm not going to use that because, well, I'll show you. All right, so now we have medium orchid. I'm going to just hold this down, and I'm going to give this more of a heavy hand. Oh, that color. That color just makes me want to go somewhere warm. <laughs> okay. This is really an easy stencil to use too, guys. I mean, if you've ever struggled with lining up layers and stuff, this is so easy to use, so easy to see. My daughter Alicia drew this one. And she actually drew this almost a year and a half ago, and we didn't release it the first Christmas because we released her uh, Perfect Point set of stamp set instead. It's the same design, but very tiny. All right, and now we're going to use this third stencil, and this has the dots in the center as well on this one. It's easy to line up. You just kind of pop it into place. You'll see, you'll feel it when it's right. So Angela wants to know, are the stencil numbered? Are stencils numbered? They are numbered. They are numbered. This says layer three on it. It says perfect point set of three. So you'll know which ones to do. And you just want to go from light to dark. So I'm using this same color in here, and I'm going to bring that into the center. Are you using the same brush for the two colors? I am. Since I started with the light one and they're exactly in that same color family, it really won't affect the darker colors. As you go down, you can just use the same brush. Okay, and if you want, you can get very creative. I had to turn around for a second because I forgot to get this color. Let me find it real quick. Here it is. So if you want, all my ink has just fell over. If you want, you can use the dark orchid too. If you want to add just a little dark orchid somewhere, let me find a small baby brush. A small little blending brush here. Sorry, I gotta pick up all my ink pads that just fell everywhere, the magic of life. So I've got a baby brush here and I'm putting some of this dark, darker orchid. And I think I'll just touch the edges of these with the darker orchid, just to work a little of that color in. So the baby brushes are great for any details you want to do. Okay. Had to get a little of that color in. It's just a shame. It's sitting there looking at me saying, come on, this isn't fair. You need to use all the orchids. So those are the three colors we used. All right, let's pull that off. Oh, oh yes. Yes. So you could have done that to this layer as well if you wanted to add the little bit of darker edges. I could go back. I could try to line it up again. Why don't I do that? And we'll add a little bit of that darker orchid onto these edges too. Just around the outside. Because I want to be brave. <laughs> are you working are you working on an A2 size here? I am going to be, I'm going to turn this into an A2 size. Yeah. I'm just using the full stencil just so that we can see the full effect of it. And also it's going to make it easier for me to do my final step for the foiling. Okay. 
So now I'm just gonna add a little bit of that dark around the outside here. It's just kind of catching the, the little hooks there. I feel like it gives it something a little extra. Oh, I like it. Okay, let's see what that did. Yeah. I like that because it gives you that kind of that little bit of jazz in there. And then this already has it because you went heavier around the outside. All right, so there we are. now. I'm going to take my heat tool and I'm just gonna lightly from a distance, just kind of go over this a little bit, just to dry it because I'm gonna put embossing powder on here. Yeah, the, the dark edges make a difference. I did shift a little bit there. So you might see that in the photograph. So I'm sorry about that, didn't mean to shift, but it's better than horrible. All right, so now we're going to use the embossing magic pad, and I'm going to put embossing magic all over the surface of this. I know it looks really light now, but it's okay because, you know, we'll just brush all of that off at the end. I really want to make sure that <coughs> this is completely dry. Wow, that was a lot of embossing magic. Okay, so now my next step is to get the veins. Now, you could, you could do the veins um, in embossing and it would be beautiful, but we're gonna step it up and we're gonna do foil. But this is a way to get foil on your card. It's just a really neat way to do it without pastes and without gels and without any of that stuff. You can do it right away at home today. All you need is some deco foil and your laminator. Okay, so I'm gonna tape this down really well. Let me just brush away the excess here of this embossing magic. And what I'm gonna do here is I am going to, I'm gonna just take this masking magic off. And then I'm gonna line this up again Okay. And then I am going to tape this together because I don't want it to move at all. So I'm taping this together like that. All right. And I use masking magic for that because it comes apart really easily. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the embossing and watermark ink cube Embossing magic. Embossing magic is, it's got a like a dust in it that removes any static from the surface of your card. And it also removes any oil or anything so that embossing powder only sticks to where you want it to. Okay. And I, now you could do this two ways. You could either take a sponge dauber. This is an old sponge dauber of mine and you could use an embossing and watermark pad. You can do this with Versamark if that's what you have. Or you can use an ink cube like this and you can smush directly down into the stencil like this with your ink cube. Now you could do it that way or you can get some ink on to your sponge dauber and you can press this ink. You, do, you can't really use a blending brush for this part because you need to really lay down some thick layer of ink here. So, and you need to like kind of smash it in, down into the, the stencil. Now I know you guys have old sponge daubers laying around. You can also use a makeup sponge. I found one of these little makeup sponges at Walgreens. It was a little bag of them. You could use something like that too. But my favorite is to use these jumbo sponge daubers for this. I really like it. Okay. And you just wanna make sure you get it everywhere. 
I know I have some blue on here, but luckily it's not transferring into my um, into my, onto my ink pad. Could you use a brayer? Nope, a brayer will not get down there deep enough. You really have to like you need something that you can smush in and will sink down into the image itself. Now this is for the stencil design. Our stamp stamp's going to be very different. <laughs> And I just want to make sure I have it everywhere because I'm talking a lot and I'm not paying attention and I'm not being very methodical about where I'm putting it. Okay. I think I got it everywhere that I want it. Hopefully. Okay, another question from Judy. Is the masking magic the strips you are using as tape to hold things down or are they actually a tape and a roll? It's, um, they're strips. They come on a sheet like this and you can peel them off like that. And they come in three different sizes in the pack, quarter inch, eighth inch, and half inch. And I'm just using the half inch ones. Okay, so now I'm going to use some clear embossing powder. So I'm going to leave the stencil on here. I know that sounds crazy because the, the powder is going to get all over the stencil, but that's okay because it'll wash off super easy. But the reason I want to do that is because I just don't want ink. I just don't want embossing powder anywhere else. So I am just putting it all over and I'm letting it like sink down in there. And then I'm going to brush that away and I can look and see that looks pretty good. I think I have it everywhere. I can do a little bit more. Wow. Did you rehearse this? No. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so now this is the important part. <laughs> you got to take the stencil off, okay? You do not want to emboss with the stencil on or you'll melt your stencil. But now you don't have any veins anywhere that you don't want them. And you don't have any embossing powder anywhere where you don't want it. You could still, you know, blow away anything that might be, you know, on there, but by doing it that way, it really eliminates having to figure out, oh, do I have, you know, embossing powder in areas? It's hard to see. So that just allows you to get it in the right spot. This, drop it in the sink, a little bit of soapy water, it'll come out brand new. It's not a problem. Okay, and now I am going to emboss this. Okay. This is clear powder, by the way. You can use white powder too, but I used clear for it. And you don't want to overcook it. Just do it till it's shiny. Okay. I think that looks pretty good. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is get my laminator. Now, this laminator is the mink. It is by Heidi Swap and American Crafts. It's a great laminator. It's made for the crafting industry. The big difference between this laminator and other laminators is, number one, this has four rollers instead of two. And the other thing is it heats up almost instantly. If you use a regular laminator that you pick up at Walmart or Amazon or something like that, you will have to let it heat up for about 15 minutes because you want it to get as hot as possible. With this, you only need to let it heat up for like three minutes and it's ready to go. So, but if you have the mink, they do run hotter than a regular laminator for good reason, because if you wanted to foil on something like chipboard or something like that, you need a higher setting because it's different. But if you wanted to laminate on say vellum, you wanted to do foiling on vellum, you would use a much lower setting. So, you know, see, it's all ready to go now. Um, I'm setting it to heat, heat setting too. If you don't have a mink and you just have a regular laminator, just let it to whatever it goes to and it will be fine. 
Um, and you can go maybe just let it heat up for like 10 minutes instead of 20 minutes. Okay. So now I want to make sure that my table is clean and I'm going to pick a foil. So the foil that I want to use for this one, where did I put it? Okay, here it is. I want to try twinkling pink. So this is twinkling pink foil. I don't want the veins to be a bright silver or anything like that for this one. I just want like pretty color over, over them. So I'm going to look and see if this covers all the veins. And it does, even though it sticks out a little bit. So what I do is, this is the Gina K Designs Fancy Foil. It's made by ThermoWeb. And it is um, a six by eight sheet. So when I get these six by eight sheets, I cut them in half. So mine are four by six, which is a perfect size for the front of a card and for all of these things. Um, and then I just put them into a stamp pocket with the, um, the insert that comes with it so I can see what it is right away. And I just store them that way. So, okay. Well, I embossed before I foiled because if I put the foil on there, it's not going to stick to anything if I don't have something for it to stick to. If I just used regular ink, it wouldn't stick to that. I need it to stick to something. Now, you could use DecoFoil transfer gel and you could wait for it to dry. You could also use, um, well, you know, the DecoFoil transfer gel, either the Blanco or the Duo and wait for it to dry. But I'm in a hurry. I want to do this and I don't want to deal with pastes and gels. I don't want things to dry. And I'm not looking for that crisp look. I'm looking for a more um, distressed look for this. So that's why I'm doing it this way. Now I'm going to put this in here. It may not fit all the way in, but as long as the foil is in there, that's all I'm worried about. This is a piece of parchment paper. It's different than wax paper. Please don't use wax paper because wax paper will ruin your um, your laminator because all the wax will get all over the wheels. So you want to use parchment paper. It has no wax. This is the parchment paper from ThermoWeb. And this is the one I prefer to use because it is super thin and it allows maximum heat on your project. If you want to foil on acetate, hmm, that's a really good question. I haven't foiled on acetate, but I'm thinking if you're going to try it, go to the lowest setting and try it first on that. And then if that, if you didn't get a good transfer, move up. So maybe have a test piece that you try some different settings for that. All right. So this is set on two. I'm going to send it through the mink here, the laminator. And I'm hoping for the best. Honestly, guys, I don't know what's going to happen. I told you I'd do this stuff live with you. So we're going to experience it together. Um, when stamping with white ink on vellum, is there a best white to use? Well, I like the Gina K Designs white pigment ink. And then I would put clear embossing powder over it and set it. That's what I would do. Or I would just use white embossing powder. Yes, you can use a regular laminator for this, Irma, as long as it heats up. Okay, Vicki Booten, I am counting on you, your good mojo, that it's going to work out perfectly. I hope so. We'll see. Okie dokie. I think it's going to look good. All right, so now we get to do the fun point, the fun part, the peel and reveal. So let's peel this off. I would wait for it to cool just a minute. Let's just wait. Does it make a difference to put the cardstock shim on the top or the bottom? I always put my cardstock shim. I put a piece of cardstock. That's what Lisa's talking, or um, I think that comment went by, but that's what she was talking about. I put a piece of cardstock in there to create a shim. It makes it a little bit tighter, and then it also um, thickens it up a little bit, so it moves your paper a little bit higher to the top rollers. Uh, Andrea, I don't know. The parchment paper that I've purchased at the grocery store has been a lot thicker than the one ThermoWeb sells. Okay, so here we go. Let's see what this looks like. <gasps> oh, isn't that pretty? I love it. And you see, it's more distressed. It's not as crisp, but it gives you a really pretty shine. 
No, no, no. I Well, I tried this with stamps. Look at that. Oh, my gosh. Isn't that beautiful? I love it. And I love the twinkling pink because if you look at the twinkling pink, it's not just a flat foil. It's more holographic. So it gives you more, more of a fun look. All right. So we're going to trim this down later and we're going to turn it into a card. And I think what we're going to do is I might try using wishing you joy. This is one of our toner sheets. So I think I will try foiling that. Let's see how that looks with the twinkling pink. I'm going to cut this out and then we can cut it out after we foil it. This is all of our sentiment strips are printed with this toner. So you should be able to use it for this. And I think you could actually go a little bit lighter. I'm going to swap this out because it's a little wrinkled. I'll use that one again for more of the poinsettia things that I do. But you should always foil these before you cut them because once you cut them, you put dents in it from the dye and then the foil can't dip down into the dents. So you definitely want to, um, to do that first. All right, let me get another little piece. Maybe I could just take a piece off of here. I think I will. I'm gonna take a piece off of here. This is the one we just create created. And I'm going to put that on top and I'm going to move that up to three because this laminator, you know, because it has the heat settings, I want it to be a little bit hotter. Yeah. The negative foil would make a really pretty card, wouldn't it? Like if you could figure out a way to get some color under there or die cut around it. Yeah. The negatives always look really pretty. Okay, so let's run this little greeting through here and see what it looks like. I might go with black instead, but I just want to see what it looks like and see if I get a good lamination here. I'm just holding my finger there so that the foil doesn't just slide down off the, <laughs> off the toner. <laughs> All right, so this is the hardest part, you know, waiting for it to go through. Glad to have you here. Better late than never is absolutely the truth. Okay. Yeah, I really like the way this, I really like the way this looks, especially from the side. Look at that. It just gives you so much sparkle and shine. Okay. So I'm hoping for the best for this one. Now, usually with this, you do not have to wait for it to cool. It should work right away. So let's go ahead and peel that off. There we go. So we have our greeting, wishing you joy. And it just, it's perfect. There's no spotting or anything. It's really perfect. So now I'll cut that out using one of the sentiment strips dies. And then I don't have to worry if I put dents in it, anything like that. That's totally fine. So that might look good with this, where it's all kind of the same but I feel like maybe the black would look a little better. We'll see. Um, you cannot use this foil in a hot foil machine, no. This is the deco foil and it's made to use with their deco foil transfer gel. It's made to be used with toner sheets and a laminator. But again, if you're new to this, laminators are super cheap. I mean, you can get a laminator for under 20 bucks on Amazon, and then you can be playing with foil without a big investment. And if you just want to do foil every now and then, it's really nice to have that option. And with the toner sheets and the adhesive sheets and some of the other things that the ThermoWeb offers, you don't really even have to spend a lot of money for, you know, foil plates or anything like that. Okay. Yes, you can, you can foil the white sentiment sheets as well, Pat. They're printed with the same toner. Okay. The difference in the foils. Um, so, Vicki, these foils are meant to react to toner or transfer gel. The other ones are meant to react to heat. So if you put this foil, you put glimmer foil through a laminator, you would just get a solid sheet of foil. It wouldn't distinguish the designs. Um, 
And there's something about this foil and the backing of the foil. It's got a different backing on it that doesn't work with the die plates. It's got a different kind of backing. So, but the big thing is sometimes people will buy the glimmer foils and they try to use them in a laminator and they just get a solid sheet of foil when they pull it out. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do some stamping. So I'm going to get this ink pad again, and I'm going to get a small piece of white cardstock. Let's find my white cardstock. Here we go. And again, I'm going to use my embossing magic pad over the surface of this because I don't want there to be any, um, any junk all over it from my lotion that I put on my dry, shriveled hands. Okay, and then I'm going to use the Blizzard stamp set here for this. So I'm going to get a block. I need a big one. And I'm going to start. I love this, this snowflake set. I've used this a couple times before. I've used it in a five-minute card video, and I used it in um, some other videos that I did, one with colored pencils and Gamsol. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to ink up this stamp. Okay. This is like the most boring video to watch until actual color gets on the thing because <laughs> there's nothing to see. I'm using clear ink and clear powder and cl white cardstock, but you guys, you guys get it. Okay. So I'm going to go right in the center here and stamp this real well. And then I am going to put my embossing powder on this first. Yeah, I mean, there is a difference between the mink and a regular laminator. It's kind of like, you know, one was made for the crafting industry. Those extra rollers make it heat up faster and all of that. And it's a great machine, and I love it, and that's why I bought it. Um, but if you don't have the funds for it, you can still have fun. You can still play. You can still be here. <laughs> you don't need it. It's fun because it's fast, but the other one, I mean, really, you're talking about the difference of waiting for something to heat up for 20 minutes. That's not the end of the world. If you're going to do some foiling, the first thing you do, set your laminator up and turn it on and then start working on what you're going to make. By the time you figure it all out, your, your uh, laminator will be all heated up. Okay, so I'm going to use some of these other snowflakes here. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to stick one here, and then I'll put this same one up here in the opposite corner. I'll probably cut this down afterwards. All right, and then I'm going to put the embossing powder on those so I can see where they are. Kind of like to do little steps at a time. This way you don't kind of inadvertently overlap snowflakes where you don't want to. I don't know. Can they see that at all, Tom? Can they see that powder on there? Yes. Okay, good. So you get what I'm saying. You can see it. And especially if you're, um, I'm going to turn my mink down to two again, just so it's the regular temperature of a laminator. And now I'm going to use another snowflake over here for the opposite two corners. This is how I do my backgrounds. I always start with one in the middle, then I do the four corners, and then I add into the sides. And it just gives me full coverage. There's one. Okay, and here's another one. And we'll add the powder onto that, and then we'll finish it up with some baby snowflakes. Okay. Now, if you don't have clear embossing powder, definitely use white. And if you want, if you see foil and embossing powder really do look different. And for those who've been stamping for a while, you know what I'm talking about. The, the embossing powder almost has a little bit of an antique look. It's a little duller. It's still beautiful. It's absolutely gorgeous. So don't get me wrong. It's just a different look. Where foil is like... You know, it's sparkly. 
So if you wanted to, you could mix the color embossing powder with the color foil. Say you're using gold. Start with gold embossing powder and then foil on top with like glimmery gold and it'll be absolutely spectacular. What stamp set is that? This is Blizzard. This was the one that was in the uh, hol holiday cheer kit, now available to everyone as a standalone stamp set. I really love this one. Now I'm going to do one up here. I'm really trying to mix it up. And I'm trying to remember where I'm putting them. <laughs> yes, it's now available as a standalone. If you like it. Okay. So I'm going to put the embossing powder here. Here. And then I have one more little snowflake that I want to add. I just want it to be really busy and fun. Okay. So there's those. And then I just need two things for right there. It's all going to come together. I'm going to add a little ink to this one too before I actually put the foil on. So this way we have some, you know, kind of nice blend of color, a little shading on it. Okay. Okay. There we go. Let's get that on there. I didn't go all the way to the edge with a couple of them because I, I do want to uh, cut this out with a die when I'm done. All right. You're going to see how pretty this looks now. So let's get the embossing, embossing going. Just blowing away the excess. All right. We'll start down here. And I'm trying very hard not to overcook it. You know, you don't want to burn your powder because you need it to be somewhat shiny for the foil to stick to it. Okay. Turn this. Looking good so far. I forgot about the big one. I'm going all around the perimeter and I forgot to emboss that one. Heat embossing is the gateway drug. So all of you new card makers, you must try this. You must try embossing. It is so beautiful. And even if you left it just like that, it's in real life, you get all that beautiful texture. I don't know if you can see the shine on that. I got to turn it the right way. Can they see that, Tom? Oh, I can see it. Okay, good. You have a better monitor than me. Everything's dark on my side. I don't see anything. Okay. So now let's do a little bit of um, color on here. Just real light color. We're not going to do anything crazy. We'll just add a little bit of sea glass on there. And I do want to clean my um, my brush again because I think I have like tranquil teal on here. So we'll just clean that off and make sure it's light. There we go. I never wash my blending brushes. I just rub them off on things. And I think that that really works fine. If you do wash them, use a baby shampoo or a low suds shampoo, even like dog shampoo. I know that sounds crazy, but anything that has a low suds to it, because you don't want a lot of suds, and then dry them face down onto a paper towel so that the water doesn't pool in the casing of the head. There's glue in there holding that casing on and you don't want it to uh, ruin your brush. Okay, so I'm just gonna go over this with a little bit of this color just to bring out a little of the snowflake design. You guys can maybe see that. Just bringing out the snowflakes. I think we'll add some green into this too. Just a little, like apple mint would be just the perfect green because it's so light. And we don't want to take away from the shine of the, the foil. But 
But this has been really fun for me, kind of playing with the foils and stamps. And again, it's not the same look as using a toner sheet or using a glimmer machine. It's not going to be the same look. It's a much more distressed, relaxed look. But I love it. Clean this brush off. <laughs> it is the gateway. You're right. I call it the gateway drug. So I'm just adding a little green in there. And you'll be able to see all of this a lot better when I post the pictures. Okay. Sounds like you're ready over there. Okay. Then I'm going to take that same paper towel and I'm just going to rub the ink off of that. Okay. And I can still see all of that shine in there. So now let's add, I might want to go a little darker with the color, but we'll see. Let's see what it looks like after we foil. So the foil that I want to use for this is, I want to use Brilliant Blue. I want to use this foil. This foil is absolutely stunning. I love it. So I'm going to put my piece of cardstock shim and then I've got my parchment paper. It is super thin. It's like thinner than typing paper. And then I'm going to lay that on top. And then let me see something here. Should I go a little darker on that blue? I'm going to go. I just feel like I need to do it now. It's better to do it now than later. I'm going to add a little more blue. I'm going to go just a shade darker with some turquoise sea. You know, I like to change my mind as I go. That's all right. I just feel like we need to see a little bit more in there. I think you'll agree once we get the blue on there. You know what else we could do? I just had an idea. We could add a little like powder blue in there too. But don't you feel like that just adds a little more to it? I kind of do. Maybe I'll stop there. No, maybe I'll add a little powder blue. Why not? Humor me. <laughs> a little powder blue. I love this color, powder blue. It's got that little bit of wisteria in it. Um, I gotta clean this brush. Ooh, this has powder blue on it. Okay, so that's powder blue. So I clean the brush. I'm just gonna use whatever's left on the brush here to add a little bit of that. That gives you more of like that wintry blue in there. Oh yeah. You still see a little of the apple mint. And then I'm just, again, going to wipe that away. And you can see how the snowflakes get a lot brighter once you wipe all the ink that's just resting on the top. And you do want to do that, especially if you're going to put foil on. Okay, so that just feels a little bit more misty. How often do you all start with one idea? But like every time I sit down to craft, I start with one idea and it turns into something else <laughs> every single time. But that's the fun of it. You just never know what you're going to get. All right, so I'm going to take a piece of this brilliant blue. There we go. Isn't that pretty, that foil? Look at that, all the colors that are in that. And then I'm going to put this on top. Okay. And then here we go. Foiling away. Okay, I'm hoping for the best. Where's Vicky? <laughs> I need Vicky Boot and good mojo energy. <laughs> All right, we'll hope for the best. Here we go. And again, the hardest part is the weight, right? Can we sneak a word of the day in here? Yeah, Tom, we need a word of the day. Okay, word of the day. Okay. So if you are going heading to your uh, stationary bike or your treadmill or going for a walk in the cool fall air and you're feeling a little bit um, like um, feeling a little bit like you don't have a whole lot of energy. So you take along a few, few Snickers bars from uh, leftover from Halloween or a few cheese puffs, you would be doing some snacksercising. 
snack exercise the word of the day for you. I love very it. Much. <laughs> snack exercising. I've done that. Actually, I have actually done that. Being a diabetic, sometimes my blood sugar goes low while I'm on the treadmill and I actually eat while I'm on the treadmill. <laughs> okay. All right. Snack exercising. All right. So now we've got the foil on here and look at this. Look at this. Oh, look at that. Isn't that pretty? Now you see what I mean by distressed? So our powder is fine detail powder. So it's very, very thin and the lines get broken up just a little bit. But look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I love that. Now, if you really wanted to take it to the next level, you could get a pencil and you could do a little colored pencil in there and add some Gamsol and all of that. But I think this is beautiful just the way it is. So we're going to stop there. I'm not going to do anything else to this. And this, you know, I mean, if you wanted to, you could figure out some kind of way to get that onto a piece of cardstock a little bit of vellum tape, something like that. You could also tape around the edges of this, right? And then you could do like a shaker card front on top of it. So this way you wouldn't have to tape it all down. It would just kind of rest behind there. You could also use one of the die plates on top of that. So you know what I'm talking about. Let me see if I have one real quick, like something like that, where you have your design peeking through. This is one of our one of our plates and you could have glitter coming through that way. So, yeah, you could use the toner sheets. Yep, absolutely you can. OK, so and that's the thing is, you know, you don't need a mink. So I don't want people to think, oh, but I got to buy a mink. You could do this with a twenty dollar laminator from Amazon or Walmart. You could go today and pick one up at an office supply store and you could have a lot of fun with it. Okay, so now let's make a couple of cards. I just don't want people to think, I love the mink. If I had my choice and I had the funds, I would buy the mink and that's what I did. This is my business and you know, I wanna have good tools. So, and I wanted to try it because I love Heidi Swap and I wanted to try her product. I think it's great. Um, but if you don't have it, you don't have to be priced out of having fun when it comes to crafting. You can still have fun. All right, so let's throw a couple cards together real quick here. Uh, I need a die cutting machine. So I had to go all the way across the room, get a die cutting machine. That's true, Vicki, that's right. You know, the mink does go on super sale sometimes so you can get a, a super sale deal. All righty. So let's cut out this little greeting. We're going to cut that out first using, excuse my shoulder here. So I have all of our sentiment strip dies. These are the large ones. These are the small set. I'm going to use the small sentiment strip dies and I'm going to cut this out. And the reason why I didn't cut it out before I foiled it is because if you miss that part, when you die cut things, you put little dents in the, the thing. So you wanna make sure that you don't have any dents in the paper that you're gonna foil or the foil can't drop down into dents. So hopefully that makes sense. Foil the piece of paper first, then cut it out. Okay. Oh, it's my pleasure. I'm glad that you're getting something out of this and that it's fun. Okay, so there's my little greeting now and you can see it's Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay. You just don't want to throw anything out, you know? Like, I'm like, how can I use that? <laughs> and now I am going to cut this out using master layouts too, because I want to do a little stitched edge on this and I don't want it to be quite as big as it is. So I will cut this out. If your dies ever get a little bit warped, all you have to do is take corner to corner and just stretch it back into shape. This will happen to any big die. It's not a defective die, but anytime you have a big die like this, the pressure of it going through the roller on the machine will bend it a little bit. I really love this snowflake pattern. I think it's so pretty. Okay. 
Now I have another video for you guys if you're interested and it uses DecoFoil transfer gel. So if you have that, I have a video on my channel called DecoFoil, five ways to use DecoFoil transfer gel. And it shows you all kinds of things that you can do. And that does use a laminator as well. So that's just a whole other fun way to, to use this stuff. So I definitely recommend watching that. And I will link that video in the description of this video on YouTube so you can find it easily. Because if you're going to think about doing laminator stuff, you might as well know how to do all the DecoFoil transfer gel stuff too, because that's super fun. The parchment paper I used as a carrier, Linda, that is by ThermoWeb. We do have that in our store. Okay. And so I cut the larger Master Layouts 2 die with that one, the black one. And then let's pick a spot on here that we can cut out. Oh, goodness, this is all so pretty. Oh, man. I don't know. Let's just pick a spot that we can cut out. I know it's terrible to cut this and... <laughs> But I, I just love all the sparkle and shine on this. I'm going to do it right there. Make sure we get the edge of the poinsettia. I know. Okay. Yeah, you know, this, I mean, this is a nice way to just kind of tap into foiling. If you have a laminator and you have some foils, you could stop right there and just give this all a try. And if it doesn't, you know, if it doesn't jazz you, it doesn't jazz you. But if it does, you haven't made a huge investment. If it doesn't, you haven't made a huge investment. So you can go from there. And if you're just starting with foiling and you're thinking, I, you know, that you want to get into the hot foils, that's great. And they're awesome. And I'm going to be doing some stuff with hot foils coming up. But... Um, if you're on a budget, here is a way that you can get into the foiling world and have, you know, some of this fun stuff going too. Okay, I'm going to cut one more little thing out here. I think I will do, I think I'll do Warm Winter Wishes because my snowflake card can be a winter card. It doesn't have to be a, um, a Christmas card. Snowflakes are good all winter long. So if you have a good snowflake set, don't give it up just because the holiday season is over. I have a February birthday and I love when my friends send me cards that have a snowflake theme on my birthday. I'm looking out the window at my birthday and there's snow everywhere. So, Okay, so there we have that. I didn't foil this one because I think it's going to stand out a little bit better on this card. Okay. Vicky's a collector. Vicky, welcome to the club. <laughs> You're a collector, but you still use your stuff. So that's, that's good. All right. And I think I got everything cut out. So let's quick assemble these cards and then we're going to give them away. So I need some, I'm, I'm just going with white card bases on this. So I'll get my big paper cutter out. I haven't even looked at the clock. It, it could be, oh, it's one minute. All right, I got one minute. Plenty of time. One minute. There are, Olympians are made in one minute, right? <laughs> you can do anything in one minute. All right, so I'm going to score this at the five and a half inch mark. This panel measures four and a quarter by 11. I'm going to do a top fold for both of these. The snowflake one, you could definitely do a um, the other kind of fold too, like, a, like in this direction where it opens that way. That wouldn't have mattered so much, but I feel like the poinsettia will look better as a top fold. Okay. Oh, I love it, Tom. You're getting into the Christmas music now. Okay. And then we can put that, like, right there. 
and we'll got, get all kinds of sparkle and shine out of that. I think I'm going to pop it up with a little foam tape. I bought this jumbo foam tape. <laughs> I always think it looks so funny coming into the picture. Like it's like a tire. Mm -hmm. I got this from Thermoweb. And now we're carrying it. I love it. Okay. I mean, it's just giant. You'll never run out. Okay. Just do a couple little pieces of this. I stuck them to each other. I need to cut one at a time. <laughs> Put a little on there. And I know a lot of you are asking about my foam squares and when they're going to be back. Um, I know Thermoweb, we've been revamping them a little bit. So they are coming soon. Well, now Thermoweb has two kinds of foils now. They have hot foil and they have deco foil. If you want to do this technique, just make sure you get the deco foil. Okay. I feel like that separates it a little bit. Look at that. Woo! That's fun. I got to add something in the center here. So you know I'm going to add some black pearls in the center of this one. It's okay if we go over. We're not network. We don't have to worry. There's nobody breathing down our neck for a commercial break. Okay. So I'm going to just put a few little dots here. Okay. And then I want to get some of these black pearls. These are hard to pick up. <laughs> They're slippery. They just move all over the place on the table. And I think we need like some big ones too, bigger ones. And they, they're like turtles. They're like turtles on their back. You can't, you can't get them right side up sometimes. And they're heavy. I really should probably use tweezers for this. I'm gonna use the tweezers because it's just such a heavy embellishment. Sometimes it's too heavy. Let's see. <laughs> or not. Ugh. I struggle some days, guys. There we go. We all have to laugh together at our silliness. Get a couple of these tinies. One in the center there. That little bit of black, and I, I know that the centers of poinsettias aren't black, but the little bit of black in there just, I think, is great because it, it kind of, I don't know, it works well with the black cardstock. So there we go. Flying embellishments. Oh, I'm telling you, you should see what's flying around here. Okay, and then we'll do this one real quick, and then we're going to give these away. Flying embellishments, flying cardstock. You guys have seen me throw the cardstock when something doesn't work out. <laughs> it's real around here. We're not pretending. Nothing's edited out, so you get to see all the struggles live. <laughs> So this one I'll just put right onto the card because there's good separation already because it's black. I'll actually put it right from the corner there. I think that will look nice. And then we'll do some little embellishments. I'll do easier ones. I won't do something so heavy. And I'll do one there, one there, one there, one there, maybe one there. Okay, I will use Disco ball sequins. You know, I love my disco ball. So we'll do a big one in the center and then we'll do a medium one up there. I think I just put my hand in the glue, my wrist. <laughs> do one down here and then we'll get some babies in there. 
We have more pick and stick tools coming. I know you guys are, a lot of you are waiting for this tool. It's a good one. I really enjoy it. Got that there. I'm gonna move that over a little. And one more baby. There. Okay. So there's that one with all the foil and all the sequins. And then we've got this beautiful poinsettia. All right, Tom, let's give them away. So let me just let me just make everything look good. <laughs> let's move it out. Mm -hmm. There we go. <laughs> okay. Ah. <laughs> now I can zoom in a little more if I can find my zoomer. Here we go. So you guys can see them a little better. Oh, I almost shut the camera off. I should really not do anything today. <laughs> okay, so let's Drum get a close please. view. We're going to do the poinsettia one first. We're going to give this away. Ooh. Oops. Okay, what, you don't have a drum roll? Was it a horse whinny or something? <laughs> <laughs> Here's the drum roll. Okay, there we go. All right, two cards to give away. And we have the first one going to Vicki Donnelly. Vicki! Yay! Yeah, Congratulations, yeah. Vicki! All right, this is coming your way. Okay. And then. Okay. And ooh, then. Look at that. You get that. Look at that. Wow. Okay. This beautiful card goes to Ruth Chadwick. Ruth, Ruth. congratulations. This is your card. I hope I don't give anybody a seizure with all that flashing. It's like a disco. Woo. All right, everybody. Well, ladies, all you have to do is send your name and address to info at ginakdesigns.com, and I will get those cards right out to you. Guys, thank you so much for being here today. This was so much fun, something a little bit different, maybe a first little step for some of you into foil by using your stamps and your stencils, and then you can graduate to deco foil transfer gel and doing all the fun toner sheet things to do as well. Um, I will be back over the weekend with another five-minute card video, and then Tom will be back. Tom and I will be back next Tuesday night for another Stamp and Chat Live. In the meantime, you guys, stay safe and stay healthy. We love you all so very much, and mwah, we'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.